super energized, right? Super uh, vibrating at a high frequency. Okay, so that's what that is about. Okay, so during the light reactions, all of the pigments in the photosystem collect the light energy. The energy is funneled toward the reaction center, so towards this part, right? That's what it's trying to show you. Okay, all the energy is going towards here. Okay, and ultimately it will energize the special electrons of chlorophyll A. So ultimately that's where the energy is going, right? We talked about energy coming in different forms. So the energy coming from the sun, the photons are a type of energy. That energy now has been transferred into electrons, right? So you can also think of electrons as being energy. These electrons have a lot because they have been energized. Okay, and these energized special electrons from chlorophyll A, they will travel through an electron transfer chain. Actually, they will travel to through two electron transfer chains. Ultimately, they're gonna end up on NAD plus. This actually should be, I would make this, make a note here, NAD P, okay? Put a P here, should be a P here. We're not talking about making NADH, right? So when they end up on this molecule, what do we create? What's the molecule called? It's this guy, NADP, that's been reduced. What is it now? It's been reduced because it's gained electrons. It's NADPH, very good. So very similar to NAD plus becoming NADH. Now you have NADP, NADP, P, becoming NADPH, right? So where did the, where did the energy come from? First, the sun. Where was it transferred to? The special electron in chlorophyll A, right? Then where it went through the electron transport chain and then it ended up in NADPH, right? So that's how the energy is being transferred. Okay, so you can look at this. It's, if you understand the electron transport chain of cellular respiration, you'll see some similarities here, right? There's some differences, of course, right? Because we don't have in this, what do we see in cellular respiration? We see electron carriers putting the electrons into the electron transport chain, right? Here, it's kind of opposite. You're actually gonna put the electrons onto the carriers, right? It's reverse. The energy is coming from the sun. Right, so it's not coming from electron carriers that are giving off electrons, it's coming from the light, from sun. And you have two separate electron transport chains. So the first thing that happens is that light comes in. So what do you think these are, PS2 and PS1? What do you think it stands for? It's short for photosystem, exactly. So when you see these guys, right, you can actually envision the previous picture where we were looking at everything like the reaction center and all of that in chlorophyll A in it. Here it's a simplified structure, right? They just made it a blob, right? So these are two different photosystems, okay? And they named photosystem two and photosystem one because one was discovered before two. We have to start with two, okay? So put that in your notes over and over again. We start with photosystem two and we work toward photosystem one. All right, uh, it's, it's just how it is and it's gonna be this way forever. We're stuck with this um, system just because how they were discovered. So photosystem two, it's just named that and you don't have to worry too much about the P here and the P here, but what do you think it stands for? The wavelength. So they have slightly different pigments, right? And so it's like, oh, the wavelength of the pigments that this guy is, is uh, receiving, basically. Now, photosystem two is super special, super special because the light that comes in, um, what are these electrons up here? Where were they energized? Chlorophyll A, right? So these guys are energized by chlorophyll A. 
and then they will travel through, where do they end up? From photosystem two, they're gonna end up at photosystem one, exactly. And here is what happens. Photosystem two, the reason it's a very special photosystem is because it's kind of like a mama, okay? A mama that lost its electrons, its special electrons because it they got energized and they traveled away and it freaks out and now it wants new electrons, right? That's how you can think of it. And it wants electrons and what can it do? It has a special property. It can, you see this? It can split water to become oxygen. It literally takes the electrons from water, the H's, right? And that will create the byproduct oxygen. So you have to think of this happening all the time, right? Like constantly happening. And so these special electrons are just leaving up, and then photosystem two is just taking them from water, right? Creating oxygen in the process. So you're gonna make a big note somewhere. Photosystem two is what splits water, right? The electrons, uh, if you're gonna follow the electron flow of um, photosynthesis, you can actually start with water, right? You can think of it this way. Water provides the electrons for photosystem two, right? And those electrons get energized by the sun in chlorophyll A, and then they keep traveling through. And so they keep coming from water. And that's very important. It's a very important feature of photosystem two that it can split the water, that it can take those electrons. It oxidizes water, right? That's what it's doing. Um, because we obviously need this byproduct. It's super important for cellular respiration. Um, so that's, that's that. And what do you see happening between photosystem two and photosystem one? When the special electrons are traveling through, which is it going straight across this, these arrows? They're going pointing downwards, right? What do you think that means? What do you think they're trying to illustrate? Uh, no, not really. It's loose, they're losing energy, right? So they're, they have a lot of energy when they're energized and it's actually trying to show you that as they're passing through, they don't have as much energy, right? They're going from having that high energy frequency, being energized by chlorophyll A, and then they kind of lose energy as they travel to photosystem one. In the meanwhile, what's happening here? protons are pumped, right? So that should be similar to the electron transfer chain of cellular respiration. It's the first part, the first electron transfer chain where the protons are being pumped in to the thylakoid lumen, okay? So inside of the thylakoid, if you think about the thylakoid, you have the membrane. So inside of the thylakoid, you're like now inside of the coin, right? That's where those protons are gonna be generated. Right, the electrons get here to photosystem one. Uh, now this has a bunch of pigments in it, right? So this one can also energize electrons from the light. So it regenerates, these guys are down here and the light hitting this one actually re-energizes re those electrons. So they have high energy again. This is what's happening at photosystem one. And then those electrons are ultimately ending up where? Do you see the molecule we talked about? Where do they end up, the electrons? On NADPH. Do you see this is being reduced to this? There's an enzyme in here that helps this. This enzyme is actually called NADP plus reductase. When it gets the electrons, it will reduce NADP plus to become NADPH. Great, we missed something, right? Something happened in between here and here. It's the proton concentration gradient that happened. And what enzyme can use a proton concentration gradient to create ATP? ATP synthase. 
the same type of enzyme you saw in mitochondria is also present in the thylakoid membrane, right? So the same kind of a guy with a motor that utilizes these protons that are coming from the lumen, they want to travel down their concentration gradient, right? And they do that through ATP synthase, which then can phosphorylate ADP and make ATP. Your previous slides on cellular respiration, when it was looking at ATP synthase, it didn't even show you, I think it just showed you ADP becoming ATP. This one is actually showing you PI, do you see PI here? What do you think this stands for? It stands for inorganic phosphate. So the P is for phosphate and the I is for inorganic. So it just means that there's a bunch of phosphate molecules. You obviously need that. If you're gonna create ATP, you need to attach a phosphate to ADP. So that's what that means. And you can actually put that onto your cellular respiration slides, right? You can put a little a plus and in, and you also need an inorganic phosphate to create the ATP, right? So which, if you're gonna make a big circle around this, right, this or box, this is electron transport chain number one, this is electron transport chain number two over here. Which one of them is important for creating ATP? Electron transport chain one or electron tra transport chain two? Talk to your friend. Which one is important for creating ATP? Okay, can you tell me, PTC number which? This one, number one, or this one, number two, is it that's involved in ATP production? Huh? One, very good. Okay, the, I'm trying to tell you this because the darn ATP synthase in this picture is right next to the number two, right? But that has nothing to do with the second part, right? It's the first one, put this in your notes, right? On this slide, preferably, right? Because you see this part, that's where we're generating proton gradient, right? This is where the protons are being pumped. There's no protons being pumped in this part. So that is then what's being used for this structure. You could literally like erase ATP synthase from this side and put it over here, right? It can be put anywhere else. This is the portion that's important for generating the proton gradient, which is what's used by ATP synthase. Now, ETC number two, so electron transport chain number two, this guy going from photosystem one, to NADPH, right, or NADP plus becoming NADPH, is involved in creating are these are two important molecules. These are the products of the light reactions, right? These are two high energy molecules that are important, they're products of the light reactions, right? And this is where we get them from. So if I were you, first big picture, you have to understand the inputs and outputs of the light reactions. Second, you realize where are they created, right? Like once you understand the big picture, then you go and you look and you say, okay, that's right. It must be the first ETC that's involved in creating ATP, 
because that's where the protons are generated, that proton radiation, okay? And then it's the second part where it's important for making that other molecule, MADPH. What was another product that you have to memorize for the light reactions? Byproduct? Oxygen, not carbon dioxide. We're not, think about it this way. So cellular respiration creates carbon dioxide. Here, we're gonna use carbon dioxide. It's never gonna be an output of photosynthesis. It's gonna, it's gonna be an input in the Calvin cycle. Right, so we're creating oxygen. And so the other one that is a product of the light reaction is oxygen. Here it says half an oxygen because it's talking per water molecule. You have to understand this keeps happening, keeps happening, right? So um, it says half an oxygen here. That's just to make sense with these number of molecules up here. So don't, don't worry too much about that part. Okay, so oxygen, right? We're not gonna use that in the next step. So these two we're gonna use, so these are the ones that we're interested in for that purpose, but also know that oxygen is being generated here. How is it being generated? What, what structure is it that generates the water? Photosystem two, good, right. Photosystem two is the mama that that loses the electrons and splits water, right? So that's where this is being generated. Good. All right, so if you're gonna go through it, right, like step by step, first you have light energy, which enters photosystem two. It's funneled to that reaction center, that's not color blue here, but you can Im imagine it, and it energizes the electrons, great. They go up in energy, now they're up here. Then electron carriers will shuttle these electrons through an electron transfer chain. So there's this, this is, you can think, okay, there's the carriers, these proteins are gonna be shuttling the electrons over. And as they move through the chain, their energy helps pump the protons into the lumen of the thylakoids, okay? When they reach the end of the electron transfer chain, they're transferred to photosystem one, right? So there's questions like this. Where do the electrons from photosystem two end up? They end up in photosystem one, right? And protons will be pumped meanwhile, okay? So electrons reach the end of the ATC, they're transferred to photosystem one. Then when light energy is absorbed by photosystem one, the electrons are re-energized, right? They're energized again. And then they're used to reduce NADP plus to become NADPH. So, okay, the electrons are energized again, they go through here, and this enzyme can now put them on to that guy, so it becomes this guy. I Separate from this, kind of, right? We're putting it at the end here, but right, you have to, th these are happening all the time. It's not like it's happening one, 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 and we're just looking at the flow of things. ATP synthase uses the energy of the protons, moving back across the thylakoid membrane to generate ATP through kinosmosis. So here, put another note, right? Protons generated in the first electron transfer chain, right? Like, just to memorize that, to keep telling yourself, okay, that's where they're generated. This figure is looking at that same thing, right? It's looking at two photosystems, but it kind of has you know, it's a simplified, in a way, picture of the two photosystems in this chain, in the electron transport chains. So you start with what photosystem? Two. two, right? So you have two, light is hitting, right? These are the special electrons because when they're energized and leave, right? Photosystem two, it will split this guy, water, to get more electrons. So this keeps going like this, right? You can imagine that it keeps happening like this. So the electrons are coming from the water. And when it's doing that, obviously this is where you're creating that oxygen, right? Okay, so light's used, the water is used here in photosystem two. Okay, then they go through. What is this illustrating? ATP. Right, it's putting it in between photosystem two and one, right? Do you see that? Because this is where that proton concentration is generated. 
So water is split in to provide new special electrons to photosystem two. The proton pumps create a gradient for chemiosmosis, right, which is a term that we saw in cellular respiration. It just means that protons are traveling through ATP synthase to make ATP. And then this part, right, there's new special electrons for, for PS1, and they come from PS2, right? And then ultimately, NADPH is the electron carrier that's used in the dark reactions of photosynthesis. When it says dark reactions, please put in Calvin cycle here. It's called several names. It's called the light independent reactions. It's called the dark reactions. It's called the Calvin cycle. I prefer if you just say Calvin cycle, right? Like light in Calvin cycle. Put light independent reactions and Calvin cycle together. Some old school people sometimes call it the dark reactions. <clears throat> okay, now we're looking, what do you think we're looking at here? Who gets nervous when we're looking at graphs like this? It's a simplified thing, don't worry, okay? What is it trying to show you? It's kind of the same as when we're talking about, okay, the arrows through the electron transport chain are not going vertical, right? They're going downward. So what were we talking about that? The amount of, yes, exactly, the amount of energy they have. And so here, right, from water, you get those electrons. Photosystem two takes the electrons and it makes them super energized, right? They're traveling through to photosystem one, they're losing some energy, but they get re-energized here because this also has a bunch of pigments in the reaction center, right? Boom, they're energized again, and now they can be put on to NADP plus to become NADPH. Right, okay, so this is the whole thing. This is the summary of the light reactions. You have the inputs, right? What do you need? You need Light, obviously, for the light reactions. That's the energy. You need water. What does that provide you? It, it will create oxygen, but what does it provide you? Electrons, right. Um, that's the source of the electrons. So when you're watering your plant, next time think, I'm giving you electrons, photosystem two, I'm giving you electrons. That's, that's why water is so important. Okay. NADP plus, why do you need that? Because one of the products is NADPH, so you have to have this to create NADPH, right? You have to have the molecule that can be reduced to NADPH, right? This is the oxidized version. And then you also need ADP, right? Because you're gonna create ATP, right? So these are the inputs of the light reactions. And again, the way to memorize these, I think it's easy for some, I mean, for, for all of us to think about our plants, right? You know that they need sun, you know they need water. These guys, well, you have to memorize that the outputs are NADPH and ATP, so these guys would have to be the input, right? Quit yourself on those things, right? Make sure that you have that down. Okay, and then of course the outputs, or what else do you put in here? The products, right? The product of the light reactions is oxygen, it's a byproduct, NADPH and ATP. These are the two that are gonna go on to the Calvin cycle, right? Those last two are the energized molecules that are gonna go through to the Calvin cycle. What are we gonna do in the Calvin cycle? Do you remember? What's, what's, the re, what's the overall goal of the Calvin cycle? We're gonna fix the carbons together. We're gonna put them together. If you have carbon dioxide, right, and you're gonna make, put one carbon dioxide together with another carbon dioxide, right, you're gonna put a bond between them. Is that a catabolic or anabolic reaction? Taking one gas, making it into a bigger anabolic, does that need energy? Yes, right? This is where the energy is coming from. It's coming from the light reaction, right? So that's the order. All right, so the Calvin cycle, the overall goal is carbon fixation. That's just a fancy word, but you need to know it. 
but for putting carbons together, right? Fixing something in the kitchen, how do you put fix, how do you fix something in the kitchen, putting something together in the kitchen? Okay, carbon fixation just means connecting carbons. Okay, so the definition is attaching carbon atoms together to generate organic macromolecules. That's just saying, okay, organic macromolecules just means a bunch of hydrocarbons strung together. So the overview of the Calvin cycle, this is a simplified picture, but here we have carbon dioxide, right? So when you looked at the overall reaction of photosynthesis, right? You needed the water and the energy, right? You needed the water and the energy, but you also know that you need, not maybe a crazy grandma, but you need carbon dioxide, right? This is where it's a reactant. Not in the light dependent reaction. This is where carbon dioxide enters. Right? So where do, where does it enter from? Do you remember the name? Something S? Somata. Very good. And I don't know how to if somebody has a good way of remembering stomata versus stroma, there's usually a question like that that shows up, right? Like because they sound similar. So for me, it was easy because mata actually means to feed in Swedish. So mata for me, okay, I thought of a mouth, mata in the carbon dioxide. Uh, you know, whatever you gotta use, you have to use tricks to memorize stuff, right? It makes it easier. Carbon dioxide enters, and now what else needs to enter? What's this guy? ATP, what's this guy? NADPH, where did it come from? The light reactions, right? The light dependent reactions. We just created them, right? We just talked about that. Okay, so they come from that part. And what are we going to do? We're actually going to make half a glucose. So if you're looking at what comes out of this, well, that's because you're taking the electrons from these guys, right? And you're using that energy to create the sugar. And so that would be a byproduct that leaves, right? This is what we're interested in at this point. It's putting the carbons together. So first off, you have to think of this, okay, the gas, the gas is entering here into the cycle, right? We have gas, we have ATP, and we have NADPH, right? Now we have to string the carbons together. So one carbon goes into the cycle, it actually gets attached to another co uh, compound. This compound is called Ruby P. I love this name, I don't know why. I like the name Ruby, I wanted to name my daughter Ruby. Okay, ruby P, okay? It gets attached to that molecule, it's called ruby P. Okay, then this guy will be split into two G3P molecules, okay? And each has three carbons. So the product here is actually called G3P, okay? G3P, um, it's not named three because it has three carbons, but I would memorize it as such, right? G3P is half a glucose, right? Do you remember how I was saying that in the beginning? Like we're actually gonna create half a glucose, right? So the G3P molecule is like half of the glucose. It has three carbons. That's what's being generated in the Calvin cycle. All right, so combining two of these molecules will build one glucose that has six carbons total. So some more names here, right? You have some more inputs that you have to memorize, some more reactants into the Calvin cycle. So you already know we have to use ATP and NADPH that came from the light reactions. You know that another input is carbon dioxide because literally that's the gas that we're gonna string together. But then we have two other key players. I named one, which was, pretty name I like, Ruby P, right? Then there's one more, okay? So Ruby P is the guy that initially carbon gets attached to, right? So you can imagine that there's just this player that we have to attach the carbon to. We can't take two gas molecules and put them together. It just doesn't work that way. So we have to first attach the carbon to Ruby P, right? There's a guy that does that attachment. There's an enzyme that does that attachment. What is that enzyme called? For those of you that read ahead, 
Rubisco, right? So Rubisco is another name that you have to know. It's the enzyme that does that attachment, right? It does carbon fixation to Ruby P. Right. So carbon fixation is done by the enzyme that's called Rubisco. So you can look at it over here. I hate, I know I get so stressed when I see this because I don't want to stress you guys out. But for this reaction, it's like kind of nice to see it. You see Ruby P here? It's an input, right? You need Ruby P so that Rubisco can put the carbon dioxide onto it, right? And then when it's going around, you're going to regenerate the Ruby P, right? So as long as you keep having Rubisco and carbon dioxide and NADPH and ATP, this can go on, right? And it's the same when, we, when you have a cycle, it just means that an input, right, a reactant is also a output, it's also a product, right? So it is Ruby P that is both an input, it's both a reactant, and it's also a product of the Calvin cycle, and that's what makes it go round and round and round. So as long as you're applying everything else, it will keep cycling, right? So. The Calvin cycle, uh, but here's the thing. So every time, so all of this happens, every time it happens one go, you're putting one carbon on. Okay, so you have to memorize this part. How many turns do you have to turn to make a G3P? Three, Three. good. How many would you have to make, do, how many turns would you have to do to complete one glucose molecule? Six, Six. very good. Okay, just memorize that, right? Each turn, we attach one carbon. So if I'm gonna make the G3P, I'd have to do the turn three times. Now, if I have to make a glucose, that would be three times two, right, which is six. Right, so it says here, but think that through, right? Make sure that you have that down. That, that also usually shows up. That doesn't just show up on our exams, it shows up on the standardized exams. I don't know why lots of nursing exams and nursing school entry exams have photosynthesis as a, a topic, but they do. Okay, well, I think that the justification is we need oxygen to survive. It's so important for biology. And also lots of pharmaceuticals are derived from plant-based products. Um, but honestly, to me, I would probably prefer it just focuses on cellular respiration, but this is what it is, right? Like we're, we're, we're kind of stuck with this. So even if you're not into plants, right? There's these things that we have to know to have a good, decent understanding of biology. Okay, so now I've talked for so long. I want you to do this with a friend. Answer the questions. What's the function of Rubisco? What's the function? That's a weird one. I don't like the wording here, sorry. What's the function of G3P? Instead, you can say, what is G3P, right? Or what, what, where is it generated? What, what is it? And then, what's the function of photosystem two? What's the function of photosystem one? What's the function of NADPH? What's the function of ATP synthase? Try to do it. If you've been paying attention, try first to do it without your slides. Talk to your friends. Right? Do you know? Do you remember? How do you rephrase this? And then go back to your slides. 